I'm one of the owners. All right, guys, we are live. It's episode 277 of the Shooter's Mindset. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. Jennifer Seymour is joining us. She's back. What's going on? Hey, everybody. Greg Cannon joining us. What's going on, buddy? Hey, everyone. And we got Man Star of the Hour here from Vortech, Jesse Rambo. What's going on, man? Hey, how you guys doing tonight? Going good here. We got one of the nicest setups on the show history here. This dude came prepared. When we say good lighting, you know, when we when we put that out, it's usually record, you know, good lighting, you know, have a good connection, have some stuff set up. This is a prime example here. I'm liking it. We're gonna do it, we're gonna do it right. <laughs> there, there there we go. Uh some show sponsors here, the folks over at GSL Technologies. Oh man, hunting suppressors, competition suppressors, pistol, tactical. You know, they got it all. Rimfire stuff. If you're if you're you know, if you're looking for a suppressor, take a look at gsltechnologies.com. Uh, what else we got? Uh, the shootersmindset.com. Obviously, you can kind of find out more about us. Um, you can watch the shows there, uh, et cetera, et cetera, over there at the shootersmindset.com. Some blogs. If you want to ask your, uh, get your questions in live here, if you're watching on the Facebook Live Direct, uh, just join the conversation. Just get them in through through that uh, live feed, and we'll get them out uh, to Jesse here uh, live. Uh, and this is going to be the show you want. If you have any questions regarding cleaning, it doesn't need to be a bolt gun, which he's kind of going to demonstrate here uh, during the show. But if AR-15s, pistols, whatever you got, you can get it's a good time to get your questions in. Is, I think it's a this is a topic that I don't know. I think a lot of people just don't like think, you know, I don't know if they I don't know, just using I I just heard we were talking about in the pre-show that the, the household items that people use sometimes, you know what I mean? Or some I, I've heard it all. I've been, you know, I've been fortunate enough to be sponsored by a lot of great cleaning companies. And man, we're gonna get into it. We'll get into it here. I'm starting too early on the box. Absolutely, okay. it's, a, it's a it's a good way to. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna break some of these myths or methods. I think that some people are doing. But really, nothing's wrong with a, a coat hanger, some WD forty, and an old T-shirt, right? Absolutely not. We'll go for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a damn right. Coat hanger, it would work. Some WD, why not? Works on our our locks. Just don't wonder why uh, your gun's not accurate anymore uh, after you've done that a few times. Yeah, it'll, uh, I got a $25 Schlage lock, but I'm going to throw it on that $20,000 PRS gun too. Why not? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what else we got? Jen, you had any – I know you were gone last week. Not really. You were technically the one who made the show work. I don't know anything <laughs> new with you. <laughs> uh, just getting ready to head to the finale, um, trying to pack. So I'll leave Thursday morning, go to Tennessee and shoot the finale. It'll be fun. You don't forget a jacket or two or three. I know it's going to be freezing cold and I don't like cold, but it's okay. I'm a big girl. I will suck it up. There we go. So you made the finale. You're one of the best shooters in the PRS world. That's correct. I don't know that, about that, but I made the finale. <laughs> that, that is correct. <laughs> yeah, that is correct, right. Uh, for those inf- unfamiliar with you, Jesse, tell us a little bit more about yourself and how you started Bortech. Yeah, I'm Jesse from Bortech. Uh, this all started in the uh, late 90s. We were just looking for some real high-end cleaning gear to take care of our nice firearms, our investments, uh, the accuracy, where it was when it came out of the box. Uh, and really just try to bring some chemistry and engineering and attention to detail to this very neglected area, you know, within the firearms industry. As you kind of mentioned and you were joking around, you, you've seen it all, you've heard it all. You know, we jokingly say, you ask five shooters how to clean a gun, you'll get at least 10 different answers. Uh, so there are a ton of myths, a uh, ton of, you know, misinformation out there. And really what we try to do is, educate our customers uh, about things to look for in cleaning gear, in the procedure, uh, so you can make an educated and informed decision. And once you are that shooter that is informed, we know you're going to start heading our way. Boom, there you go. You got to, I'm just trying to look at what you got at the, at the muzzle end of that rifle. I don't know what that is and I've never seen it before. 
Yeah, well, uh, we'll we'll get into that. I mean, I can uh, I can kind of zoom in and, and pan over if uh, if you want, but uh, let let's see here. I don't know if the. Do you guys have one of these things, Greg? Is that two liter bottle? Yeah. So basically, what you're what you're kind of looking at there, uh, that was one of our first products. We call it our patch hog, and what it does is it just catches all the mess and all the splatter and everything that you would you know be pushing out of the end of your your barrel that's going all over your floor and your table uh back in the day when you had ammonia based chemicals that stunk you know uh, it would kind of contain all that so yeah that's that's kind of one of the uh one of the first products we had and and really they work great at a windy day on the range when you're trying to clean or break break in a barrel uh it saves patches from blowing all over the place as well so yeah, it's kind of just one of the few niche products that we uh, that we've come up with over the years. Yeah, that's it. I had to point that out. I know I know you're going to get into the whole cleaning spiel, but I, we were talking for like 30 minutes before the show and I didn't realize what that was. I kind of thought it looked like a two liter bottle of some sort. And then I was like, hold on, what, what's the whole contraption on the muzzle end? So I had to get that out there. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people when we go to the shows and they, they see that they, they think it's some kind of hodgepodge suppressor. <laughs> It draws attention. That see, it works. That, that's that's yeah, works. <laughs> yeah, it does work. Uh, a little bit about more about yourself, though. Or, I mean, you you were a gun guy, a shooter. I mean, how'd you get kind of involved in the industry? Yeah, yeah. No, I I am. It uh, well, I should say I I used to be more than I am now. But really, this all started uh, when my father, who was always into hunting, uh, competition shooting, more more so bench rest shooting, long range, uh, things of that nature, bought me my first uh, rifle. And you're actually looking at it here. This is a 25-year-old Remington 700. This is my Pennsylvania deer rifle. Uh, I figured this would be appropriate to bring it back out. We're getting ready for deer season coming up here. And, you know, through, you know, my father and shooting, uh, load development, I really just got involved in it. You know, nowadays I, I do a lot more of uh, typing on the keyboard and talking on the phone than I do pulling the trigger. But I guess that kind of comes with the territory, right? Yeah, so, I hear you. Yeah, absolutely. Hunting, uh, competition shooting. Uh, that that, it, yeah, I really do when I have the time. So, yep, this is a, a good old 280, 280 Remington 700. This is what all your, you know, competition PRS style guns is. It's the action that everything was kind of based off of. So, we a good one to, to put up here. Did Hold Anthony on. free? Oh, he's there. I was I was running some multiple screens here, and I was hearing two different audios. So I was like, <laughs> "Let me mute, let me let me mute this thing." Hold on, where's the pause? Some talking about dead dead space on the air. <laughs> All right. All right. So what do we what do we got? We got, I know we have some live ones coming in here. I was just, that's where I was at. I was like, "Let me share this. Start a watch party on my personal Facebook page. Let's get everybody in here." And I saw some comments rolling, but I didn't get a chance to look at them. What do we got? Any? Yeah. Well, as they come in, let me know, you know, questions, comments, we can go over things. Uh, it's not a problem. Greg, go ahead if you have yeah. any comments, because I'm re I'm still yeah. sharing. <laughs> okay. So uh, let's see. Jorge said, what's up, guys? What's up, Jesse? What's up? Hey, Jorge, how's it going? Um, Mike Bell. Hello, Mike Bell. Mike Bell <laughs> said, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and Greg. <laughs> Thanks, love you, Greg. Greg. I mean, love you, Mike, and miss shooting with you. Yeah, we we need to we need to go shoot. Um, David said, "Burn it down, Jennifer." Burn Thank it you. down. I will try. Don't like, not, not not the house, the match. I think is what he's yeah. talking about there. I'm not uh -huh. cooking, so we're okay. <laughs> oh, don't praise burn the it. Lord! <laughs> <laughs> and don't burn any barrels out. Yeah, really. No, my barrel should be good. You're going to bring like it back up just in case? I'm like at right. 500 rounds, so I should be good on my barrel. Um, there we go. Let's see. Andrew said, big text from Rhode Island here. Love Bortech. Um, Mike Bell said, nothing Bell spe nothing smells better than Hoppy's number nine. Ooh. Ah. Ooh. And, uh, oh, Gina called, or Gina joined. Hi, Gina. So Gina's the reason why we're having this show, by the way. Um, because when I went to the Precision Rifle Expo and found out that, you know, I was going to take this class on Precision Rifle Maintenance, 
she's like, oh my God, you need to, you need to uh, record this for me or take notes or something. So instead we have our own demo here just for Gina. So we're here for her. Um, but I do have a really good question from Jorge. Um, we often hear about carbon rings in our rifles. What do you recommend we do to prevent and remove them using your products? Well, basically, if, if you're forming a carbon ring, sometimes it's because you've got a high round count through the rifle, uh, you're not using the proper cleaning gear, uh, you're using a dirty powder, um, some of the reloader powders, things like that. Really, it comes down to the cleaner. Um, if you're using a proper cleaner and the frequency and cleaning it enough, that carbon ring can never form in the first place. So we have, for example, uh, our C4 carbon remover. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that there. Mm -hmm. Basically, was specifically formulated to keep those carbon rings from ever occurring in the first place. You know, it was specifically designed with certain surfactants and penetrants to go in there and, and keep that from building. Because the problem is, once you start laying down that carbon in there, with the temperatures and pressures and there are repeated rounds going over top of it, it just gets harder and builds and builds and builds. If you do have a carbon ring, uh, it, it, it gets so hard and dense, it almost looks like black alligator skin. Any liquid will actually have a problem effectively removing that. So we do have another product called our chameleon gel, which is basically chemical technology from our carbon remover and our copper removers and things like that, mixed in with a truly 100% safe polish it, it won't harm the barrel at all you could you know scrub it until you're purple in the face it still will be fine but what it does is it's able to go in there and this is on the microscopic level basically just put a, a hairline kind of scratch in that fouling and allow the chemicals to kind of go in and start breaking it up so again if you have the carbon ring our chameleon gel product would be the best to knock it out of there but to keep it from happening in the first place you know you just want to make sure you have a proper cleaner that's effective at removing carbon to begin with. Yeah, I'm going to refer to a lot of pistol stuff because that's where I'm at. And I do notice those and I don't, sometimes you'll, you'll catch them in the back of the bre breach or something, you know, and they'll, they'll be there. And I just, I never, I don't know if I, I never really gave a shit to get it out. Um, like I've tried, like I'll take a brush to it and take your, your standard oils and stuff like and cleaners. If they don't come out, I just run it. Is that different for a, a, a bolt gun? Does that that need to be gone or? Yeah, that that's a lot different. You know, shooting a a target within fifty yards that's you know mm -hmm. this big, you know, or even you know your alpha zone being like this versus hitting a target like this at a thousand yards, the slightest little thing. You know, the uh, the way I clean my pistols and my ARs versus the way I clean my bolt gun completely two and totally two different different. animals yeah you know it's like oh i got a match this weekend you know let's clean the pistol i'll take some some contact cleaner spray out the inside of it no i don't really need to clean the barrel on it let's throw a little yeah. bit of lube on it and go you back clean to your pistol it. every once in a while i clean i clean my, I, I, I run I a borse i just run a boar snake through it and then run it yeah. followed by the coat hanger yeah oh, the coat the coat or you can do that in a bind if you if you get all your tools you can always use the hotel coat hangers that are, there's like three of them hanging right by Absolutely. the safe. No, I mean, pistols are completely different than rifles as far as you know, the accuracy. Um, like you said, you get a little bit of the carbon ring, you know, that you can visually see whether it's like, you get them on revolver cylinders all the time. You know, that's really not affecting right where the bullet is engaging the rifle. You know, that that's really the, the, the key is consistency where that bullet is engaging the rifling, sealing into the bore, you know, which can affect your pressures and things like that. So when you build those carbon rings in the higher pressure rifle cartridges, yeah, it makes a big difference. I mean, you'll have guys, they'll go out, the gun will be shooting dead on, boom, 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 boom. And all of a sudden it just falls off a cliff and it starts patterning like shotgun. And they wonder why. And nine out of 10 times it's because it's not properly clean. Um, you know, Everybody wants to know, and they're watching this because they say, you know, I, I want you to tell me when I need to clean my rifle. And I jokingly say, I, I can't. I can't tell you that. There's so many variables as far as ammunition, powders, barrel qualities, and things of that nature that every single rifle is a little bit different. Every single pistol is a little bit different. Just because yours came off the line, the serial number after mine, yours might be a nightmare, and mine might clean up in no time. So, again... Every weapon system is different. 
uh, and even the same weapon systems are still different. So we'll give you some tips and the tricks to figure out what works best, you know, and how to hone in, you know, your cleaning regimen um, to make it work best for you. Because I'll jokingly say to people, how much time will you spend trying to tweak the load, you know, to get the, you know, it to just be perfect? Well, it's you got to tweak your, your cleaning procedure as well. You know, why do you think you can just magically go, eh, uh, whatever, I don't need to clean, don't need to do this. Eventually, you do. And that's really why we're here. <laughs> Boom. All right, we're going to get into this demo here shortly. But let's throw some numbers out there. Jen, when do you like to clean your rifle? What round count if you have one? Um, I usually clean about, well, I'm going to so many matches that usually right before match, I'll clean. Um because I don't want it to be the point when I need to clean it in the middle of the match. So I'll usually clean it and then foul it up a little bit before I zero again and all that. So usually it gets cleaned right before a match. And a Same match is Rick. about 300 rounds by the time you shoot the um, train up day and the match. So there you go. And that would be with a good quality aftermarket barrel, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I mean, there's a huge difference between the amount of fouling and how often you have to clean with a factory barrel compared to, you know, good quality aftermarket barrel. I mean, it's night and day. You're getting what you paid for. So uh, absolutely. You can definitely shoot you know, a good PRS competition style gun a lot more rounds than you can a standard factory rifle. Mm -hmm. no. There we go, Greg. Any difference in, yours, in your method or... Yeah, well, first, uh, Jorge said he cleans at about 400 rounds, um, and he's shooting PRS just like us, except for he shoots a little bit better than probably me and Jen combined. <laughs> but um, I'm about the same as Jen. I'll clean it before a match or um, right after a big practice. It depends. You know, if I just go match this month, match next month, I'll clean it right before both of them. Foul the ba barrel up. Either I'll go out um, to the range right before I leave for the match and get it fouled up or I'll go and uh, you know the morning of train up go out there shoot 15 rounds through it before I go and zero and chrono and all that good stuff hmm. yeah I don't know if he's better than Jen she made the finale it's kind of a big deal <laughs> but, just saying. all right all right so let's get into the let's get into the demo man really how do, what's the process what should we what how do we do this Sure. So, I mean, basically, again, there's there's a ton of different methodologies out there. What we like to do is, you know, for a standard bolt action rifle like we have here, you want to work in reverse. And what I mean by that is you want to kind of start down at the muzzle end of the rifle and start cleaning backwards. And when you do it that way, you don't leave the cleaners in the barrel. It just works out a lot, a lot easier, a lot faster, a lot cleaner. So... Starting down at the, the muzzle end there, you would if you have a brake that's removable, pull it off. I mean, that's one thing that you'll notice if you look at your brakes after two, three, four hundred rounds, there's a bunch of stuff caked in there. So we want to pull those off if we can. If not, you can basically take a couple of wet patches, you know, kind of wedge them in there, let it soak. And you're going to hear me say, let the chemical do the work, not your elbow. You know, this stuff that's built up on there, it's hard. It's tough to get off, whether it's a muzzle brake, an AR-15 bolt carrier group or something along those lines. Let the chemical do the work, soften it up and remove it instead of you sitting there, you know, scratching at it with picks and screwdrivers and things of that nature, which you're smiling because we're all guilty of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I've done it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, again, you know, let the chemical do the work. So we'll work backwards. We'll remove our brakes. Um, if we can't remove it, obviously we're going to leave it on there. Then we're going to come back into the barrel. And once we get into the barrel, what you're going to see, and this is true pretty much for any cleaning procedure, whether it's a pistol, a rifle, a shotgun, we got to get the product in the barrel. All right. So normally what we recommend is two to three sopping wet patches. Let's, let's get it in there, get any of the loose fouling out, get that chemical to start working. After you do those two to three wet patches, you'll go ahead and we'll wet brush, you know, take your jag off, put your brush on, wet it down, scrub that about half a dozen to dozen times. Uh, then we're going to let the chemical sit and everybody says, well, how long do you let it sit? Well, I don't know. How, how badly is the barrel fouled? Did you shoot the 400 rounds? Did you shoot 20 rounds? Factory barrel, aftermarket barrel? You know, that's where you have to kind of learn your gun a little bit in order to tweak your cleaning procedure. But again, you got to get the product in there with the wet patches, 
followed up with a brush, you let it sit. Once you let it sit, start patching the barrel out. And we're going to go over all this. Um, and you start moving your patches. Are they coming out blue? Are they coming out black? And, and you can start to tell, is the gun cleaning up? Or is this just, you know, a prolonged process where we're just going and going and going? And I'll kind of give you some tips and some tricks how to read the patches and what to do based off of what you're seeing. After you do the barrel, you'd come back into the action. A lot of people forget to clean their actions. The locking lug recesses, the chambers, you know, you'd be amazed at some junk that just, you know, piles up in there. Yes, it's not an AR-15, you know, that has all the blowback or something like that, but it does get rather dirty uh, in the action there. So we'll come back through the action. And again, working from the muzzle towards the back, everything's cleaned out, everything's dried. And then you're good to go. So that's kind of the real high level generic approach that we recommend and that we take uh, from the muzzle back, you know, of the process. So I don't know if you guys have any questions about that procedure or anything else. Um, uh, I was pretty much just going to go into and start kind of showing you what we do. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Let's uh, take a couple live ones real quick. Um, Jorge said back to the carbon rings that it could cause an increase in velocity, which could cause you to miss. Because if you're tightening up your, your throat there, that's definitely going to be a, a big negative. Mm -hmm. Um, Chewy Surf said hello, everybody from Puerto Rico. Yay. Um, <laughs> and then Mike Bell has a question. Um, Mike's is a good question. It is. Um, starting with a barrel that hasn't been properly cleaned before. Where do you start first? For example, he has a friend, I think his name is Mike B, um, that has a 308 AR hunting rifle with maybe 200 rounds through it and never been properly cleaned. Okay. So would he have to do anything different than what we're about to go over or? No, no, I mean, it, he's gonna follow the same procedure. Uh, let's just say that the rifle's really badly fouled after those 200 rounds. Uh, he just might wanna let it soak a little bit longer um, maybe even overnight and we'll get into it. That's one of the benefits with our products. Uh, we do it all the time. Uh, we're busy. We get the product in there with the patches, you brush it, let it sit overnight, come back the next day. Uh, all of our products are hundred percent barrel safe and it just makes it that easy. So for a rifle, that's really bad. That's what we tell our customers all the time. Let the chemical do the work, let it soak a little bit longer, have some patience, get that rifle cleaned back down to the bare steel. And then you can start either properly either breaking the barrel in or developing a cleaning regimen uh, so it doesn't get that badly fouled again. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, good question, everybody. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's, I mean, I can almost just, just that setup that he has alone, how this nice sturdy base goes a, such a, can be, just that alone will make your cleaning whole process way smoother. I mean, I've, you know, where I clean mine right on my lap and i <laughs> on my tripod i don't even have one of those fancy things i've cleaned an I AR, clean it on the tripod the i can butt, angle it how i want butt stock on a butt stock on the thigh and just start shoving rods down there <laughs> there we go well you know when when you especially when you get into some of these longer range precision rifles that have really long barrels on them 26 28 30 whatever it might be you know the cleaning rods tend to get really long Mm -hmm. um, and that might get a little hard there, you know. Yeah, uh, so. yeah it definitely is. That's not going to work with the, this uh, with a PRS gun, especially that rod. So, how long do how long a rod do we really need? Well, that's actually a, one of the most common questions that we get. Uh, what we like to tell people is take the overall length of your rifle. You know, let's just say it's forty six inches. All right, you need to go to the next size up cleaning rod because what you need to do is have the handle of the rod stop at the butt of the rifle when the tip is flush with the muzzle. Because what happens, everybody will end up, oh, I have a 26 inch barrel, I only need a 30 inch rod. They forget about things like the action bore guides that are gonna hang out. And more importantly, as you're coming forward, you're going to end up hitting your knuckles on the stock. So what are you going to do? You're going to end up picking up on this rod to clear your knuckles. And now you're just bowing the rod as you're sending it down the barrel. That's one of the worst things you can do. So again, keep this rod handle stopping somewhere right around the butt of the rifle. You won't run into that problem. So that's a, 
that's a very, very common uh, mistake that people make is they don't get long enough of a cleaning rod. Uh, so we actually have we actually have charts on our on our website that for the different types of, of weapons, bolt guns, ARs, 22s you might have to clean from the muzzle, how to properly size a cleaning rod because a lot of people get this wrong. A lot of people. So yeah. I would say most likely for any bolt gun PRS style, you're at least a 44 inch long cleaning rod. I know a lot of the 6.5 guns, they're running 26 inch barrels, brakes on the ends, things like that. You're running about a 50 inch long cleaning rod to properly do it. Absolutely. Yeah. There we go. You yeah. guys off you guys offer these rods, you guys sell these products, right? Everything we see here. You guys oh, sell. absolutely. Absolutely. You can go onto our website, you know, vortech.com. You can see all the different products we have here and a ton more. I couldn't fit them all in here for you guys to see, but uh, absolutely. We uh, make them all. It's all 100% made in the U.S. here. Uh, most of it here in Pennsylvania. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Boom. Your rods, do they have a coating on there to protect going? You know, maybe we do, let's say we do angle that rod down in there. Are we, what are we, what are we doing here? Are we scratching something on the inside? Is our rod going to protect that or is that not a thing? Yeah. Yeah, so the cleaning rods in particular, they, they have a, a proprietary steel core that has a real good rigidity to it. And memory, if you were to bow it, it's going to spring back 100% safe. And on top of that, of course, there's a proprietary coating that we put on there to act as a safety barrier. It's extremely chemically resistant. It's extremely scratch and abrasion resistant. So if you were to hit you know, the inside of the barrel, there's no damage that's going to happen to the barrel. Basically, all of our products, whether it's the jags, the cleaning rods, you name it, they're all designed to fail and before it were to ever hurt your rifle. So that's one of the key things with, with good quality cleaning gear uh, that you, you really should be looking for is, are they truly barrel safe? You know, these screw together steel, you know, sectional cleaning rods, that's like the worst thing you can run down your barrel. Uh, you, don't, you don't see any of that up here, so... Absolutely. Everything we do is 100% barrel safe. We don't have to worry about damaging anything. Boom. What about else we got? Uh, on forth with that kind of demo that we were starting at. Yeah. 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 And then basically, so we're going to start cleaning with the patches and the brushes and everything else. Um, maybe before we get into the actual demo, I'll just go over a few specifics since you brought up the cleaning rod. That might answer a lot of people's questions right off the bat. Um, so you had mentioned, okay, what are the rods made of? You know, we went over that, but more importantly, uh, this out. basically everybody wonders why do you have a cleaning rod that the handle spins? Oh, wow. It's fancy. It's nice, but we actually do it for a reason. And the better they spin, the better the cleaning rod is because you have something called rifling inside your barrel. So as you're pushing brushes and patches down your barrel, you don't want to just slide over top of that. You need the rotation of the rod to follow that rifling and properly clean it as you're going back and forth down the barrel. So you always want to make sure you have a good quality ball bearing handle that spins freely so you can follow that rifling, clean it properly. And one of the other things is, as we come to the other end of the rod here, basically it keeps all your jags and brushes from loosening off the end of the rod. So probably some of the rods that you've had in the past, you go make a couple of passes. What do you do? You have to come back on here, tighten your jag your brush on. That's because it's actually easier for that to unscrew and loosen for the ball bearings in the handle to spin. Because as you're, as you're pushing this rod down the barrel, you do get some bow and flex. And what happens is you, you get that bow and you bind the ball bearings in those handles. Therefore, everything unscrews from the end. So... That's one of the things you want to look for in a good quality cleaning rod is a good set of ball bearings and the materials that are 100% barrel safe. You know, for example, the tip on the end of our rod, again, it's 100% barrel safe. There's nothing hard here that's going to damage anything if you were to accidentally you know, hit something on your barrel. Yeah, I mean, I, I had a cleaning rod like that a while back that I was using on my ARs and it seemed real nice and it spun decent and as soon as it started to bind the slightest little bit it was it was game over yeah that's the the common problem you'll find with a lot of the other cleaning rods you know we, we put some engineering into this to, to take care of that so that doesn't happen with ours that's awesome so 
you got your cleaning rod and then you have some of the implements that you screw onto the end of your cleaning rod. And it's, it's very important to make sure that your brushes, your jags, things of that nature properly thread into your cleaning rods and have a nice smooth and flush transition. For example, you know, we have a standard, you know, spear point cleaning jag here, which we recommend spear point jags, which we'll get into. Uh, when you thread this into our cleaning rods, there's a perfectly smooth transition between the back of the jag and the, and the front of your cleaning rod. And what that means is as you're going down the barrel, the rod goes out, when you go to pull it back in, it's not going to catch on anything. So you'll get a lot of misinformation about guys saying, oh, you know, we can only pass thing one way down the barrel. So we push the jag of the brush down, we go, unscrew it, pull the cleaning rod back. Properly designed cleaning gear, you don't need to do that. You can go all the way down the barrel and come all the way back and be 100% safe. You know, that, that misinformation came from jags where they were bigger than the cleaning rods and they catch on the crown every time you pull it back through the rifle. So you hear that clink or you feel it, that's a great way to ruin a crown. I agree with them then, you better unscrew your jag or you just need to go and get some properly designed cleaning gear. So the jag here that we have is made of actually a special alloy. We're, we're one of the only companies that, that does this. And we solved one problem by coming out with cleaners that can quickly and effectively remove copper fouling. Problem is everybody's used to using bronze brushes and brass jags, brass tips on their cleaning rods. Well, that brass, bronze, they contain 90% copper. So if you have an effective copper remover, what is it gonna do? It's gonna pull all the copper out of your cleaning gear and turn your patches blue. So I just put a little bit of our cleaner on, if you can see that, about, well, what are we, 15 minutes in? About 15 minutes ago. So you can already see how blue this has turned. And that is our cleaner pulling the copper out of a bronze brush and a brass jack. Wow. So now I'm saying, wait a minute, did that dirty patch just come from a barrel or did it just come from my cleaning gear? So it creates a lot of confusion. And, and what we've done is we've come out with, you know, special alloys and materials that don't turn blue when you're cleaning with a copper remover. So you can see this has been 15 minutes, the patches are still white. So again, it's kind of, you know, paying attention to what's going on, uh, being able to read patches. You're not gonna properly be able to read your patch when your cleaning gear is turning at all different colors. And so that's one of the other things you want to keep in mind when you're using an effective uh, cleaner to remove copper. What I'm going to do here, go ahead and we'll put the, uh, the jag on the end of the cleaning rod. We went over that. And one other thing I want to go over before we start with the cleaning gear is this thing here. So, this is a rod guide, or some people call them bore guides. This here is the single most important piece of cleaning gear. This is what's saving your butt from that cleaning rod banging around in your barrel, or you going way off center and dragging things along your chamber edges. I mean, we jokingly say, I'd rather you have a good bore guide and a crappy cleaning rod than vice versa, because again, this is what's protecting both your rifle and your cleaning rod. These are kind of, uh, a misunderstood piece of gear. You get guys that have, I've never used one before, I've never seen one before. Um, or you get some guys that'll go out and they buy the $10 plastic, they can clean 17 caliber to 50 caliber all in one type of a guy. You might as well have not even bought one. Uh, hey. Yeah. <laughs> I was talking smack about my guide and it was $11 and it's aluminum, thank you very much. <laughs> Why? understand why you need one of these and some of the features that make the our guides better than most of the others what do you end up doing you go out you buy one of ours and you throw that one away right yeah yeah i thought mine was i thought mine was good i thought i had this great one you know it was a pretty anodized and then i i touched yours and now i now i need one now you hate us i know mm -hmm. now i hate you love hate relationship mm -hmm. what, what you know, that's really important. Okay, yes, it needs to center the cleaning rod, protect the rifle chamber uh, and your cleaning rod. That's really all done by dimensions. You know, the size of the hole through the bore guide, you know, you don't use a 50 caliber bore guide and try to run a 17 caliber rod through it. There is tolerances that you want to be able to keep that rod straight. 
the other part of what a bore guide does is it seals in the chamber and it keeps all those liquids and all the dirty stuff from coming back into the chamber, dropping in, you know, your action and just making a mess, quite frankly. Um, it really is by far the most important piece of thing to do. So we offer different options. You're going to see what we have here. We call this our patch guide. This is the much cleaner, easier, faster version of a bore guide, a regular bore guide, you know, if you're familiar with them, more so has just a regular uh, back end with a little slot to kind of drip your solvent through. Uh, you're still spiking your patches, feeding it through. It can be a little bit cumbersome. It's better than nothing. It still seals in the chamber, but this one here makes life a lot easier. So that's why, of course, we're gonna, we're gonna show this here. So it simply goes in, you push it in, seals into the chamber there, you go ahead, slide the collar forward, lock it down in your uh, bolt handle recess, and boom, that's it. It's locked in there, everything's perfectly aligned. The collar on this guide here is mimicking the bolt body diameter, so it can move around. That's one of the most important things you need to look for because all the manufacturers all these different bolt body diameters, we have to make special collars for them. And that's why when you go and you get those generic ones, half the time they fit, half the time they don't fit, or they're moving all around, you know, we have to address that by, you know, offering all these different collars. So we custom make, God, we, there's hundreds of different diameters, but we do it all. So I'm gonna kind of angle this a little bit here. Um, so you've got your rods, you got your guides, now we're gonna come to, you know, let's start cleaning our rifle. So as I mentioned, what you're gonna do is you're going to take your patch, uh, you wanna run two or three of these down the barrel, wet them up real good, and then we're gonna follow up by brushing. What a lot of people do is they'll, they'll take their patch here, grab this guy here, and what do they do? They say, well, I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna stick it directly in the corner of my patch. That's, that a, that's how I, I thought that's how you do it. Me too, until I took his class at the Precision Rifle Expo. Now I'm a Wrong. genius like him. Wrong. What you want to do, especially for the first, you know, two or three wet patches, you want that patch to be a lot looser in the barrel so it leaves the chemical in there instead of being really tight and shooting it out of the end of the gun. So the way you do that is you basically come from the center and you want to come off towards the edge of the patch. Now, you're not going to go right to the very, very, very edge. You're going to stay maybe on this patch here about mm, a quarter inch or so, eighth inch in. We call it side spiking because you're moving off to the side. And when you spike that off towards the corner of the patch here on the square patch, it will dramatically loosen the patch in the barrel, leaving the chemical in there and acting like a mop to get all the loose bowing out. You'll go through, and when you do get further in your cleaning process and you want a tighter patch, so all you start to do is you start moving it back closer to the center. You'll feel the closer you get back towards the center, the tighter and the tighter the patch is going to get. Now, you'll have some barrels, usually the high quality aftermarket barrels. They have tighter tolerances, things of that nature. If you hit this dead center, it's going to jam in the gun every time. So again, just go maybe a quarter inch off center, and that's where it's the perfect fit, where you feel the, enough force going down the barrel, but you're not banging on the end of your cleaning rod or getting things jammed. So when you go and you use the side spiking technique, you'll never get a patch jammed again, and you can customize within reason how loose or how tight you want that patch to be. So again, that's one of the huge, huge misconception of how to use a jag and a patch. Um, don't hit it in the center. That's not always what you want to do. So guys, I know we're talking about, I know when we shared this a lot of places, we said there's going to be a lot of knowledge bombs tonight, and that was definitely one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone told me if someone else told me that you do that, I'm gonna be like, "All right, you're bu you're bullshitting me." <laughs> and let me hit the Googles up because I don't know how true that is. Because I've always just spiked it right down the middle and just yeah. I I tell customers all the time, just try it, and you'll you'll be able to feel and see right away uh, the difference that it truly makes. And you'll have guys be like, "I'll be damned," you know. I've been shooting for 60 years, and I I've never thought of it, and it mm -hmm. it makes a lot easier so as we, we want to hit we want to hit some more we want to hit some live so we have to make people watch the entire show to get to his demo 
<laughs> there, there he goes. Oh, hey, we got some live ones coming in. We don't want them to pile up. What do we got? So Adam Peeney says, Eliminator is hands down the best I've ever used. I second that. Sam Phelps, my friend, said that he likes to clean his um, rifle on his tripod as well. So I must have had a good idea. Somebody else does it too. Yeah, as long as it's sturdy enough and the gun's not rocking all over the place, absolutely. It's better than your leg. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's sturdy. It'll hold forever. Uh, Eric Jensen said that he said, I run a, I run blowback uh, AR9. I get a lot of carbon buildup in the muzzle brake. How does the, how much effect does that have on carbon buildup? So if I'm understanding his question correctly, I mean, yeah, ARs are filthy guns. You know, you have all the gas blowback into the, the upper, the bolt carrier group, and the brake and everything else that you have on the end is going to be no different than a bolt action gun. You know, if you're going to get that buildup in there as it starts growing and growing and growing, it becomes harder and harder to remove. And if you think about it, those brakes are there, it's kind of like a suppressor, to have the gas escape and take certain paths. Well, as you're filling that in, it can no longer work properly. I mean, we've had breaks where, you know, they're almost, you know, welded shut with this bowing and it can dramatically affect your accuracy. Now, we've had guns where we pulled the brakes off the ends that are all packed up, shoot them, and voila, they're, they're actually still grouping like they should. You know, it's all just because you've changed the flow of gas at the end of that barrel and that can affect the bullet trajectory. I mean, if you think about it, if you had uh, some of that gas affect that bullet a hundred thousandths you know, of an inch, what do you think that's going to do at a thousand yards? You mm -hmm. know, it can end up making a big difference. So, yeah, you really do want to clean those because it just exponentially compounds. It just starts building and building and building. It becomes harder and harder and harder to remove. So why do that to yourself? Will your break off after every two, three, four hundred rounds, you know, and, and let the chemical do the work and clean it. It's that easy. Dang. And Andrew wanted to know were the bore guides universal? That's a that's a very good question. Within reason. Um, <laughs> again, you won't get one that goes from 17 to 50 caliber. Uh, what we do is we group. We have three guides uh, that we group, and they're all color coded. We have red, gold, and green. Uh, so they're universal within those caliber ranges. And then as long as that collar on there fits your action again remingtons winchesters browning savages they all use the same style action a lot of your custom actions still use the same dimensions as a remington 700 so in that regard yes they are universal but we group them within three caliber ranges to keep that cleaning rod from being able to move all over the place because you're defeating the purpose um. Mike Bell actually um, posted the Knowledge Center Information Center for, from the Bortec website. So that's in the comments if somebody would like to look at that. Keith said that Adam needs to get the action cleaning lug rod better than those cotton swabs. My and, favorite thing. Well, yeah, we'll go over it. <laughs> we can get to that in a minute. And Sam Phelps um, said someone needs a lug cleaner set up for Curtis three lug actions. Uh, we have that taken care of as well. We can get to that. Yeah, we do offer uh, a different style action cleaning tool. I'll show you here once we're cleaning this gun. It'll work on your two lug style bolts, and then we have a system that will also work on three lug bolts as well. There we go. I'm going to get into discounts here, and then we're going to finish, uh, get onward with. We're at the man, we got, I think we got a lot to go here with uh, the Vortex stuff, but uh, discounts jen you usually start us off what do we have yep you can get 10 percent off at carbonarms.us on carbon arms shotgun shell caddies all that good stuff with tsm10 as the code you can also get 10 percent off of under industries jerseys sweatshirts um they have pants they have the sleeves all kinds of stuff so check them out um, and you can just go to the Under Industries Facebook page and mention the Shooter's Mindset for 10% off. And my dry fire system that's up here, y'all remember, the indoor dry fire training system, he messaged me today and is offering a discount for that um, that's going to be good until November 24th. 
So it is Mindset 20, and that'll give you 20% off of all of their products, which is great. They have like brass markers. They have the cap to go on the end of your scope so that you can dry fire indoors. Um, They have the dry fire target that's behind me that's collapsible. So check out um, the website. It's Indoor Dry Fire Training System. I should have pulled up what the actual website is. I think it's... I think it's idts.com maybe, but I'll look that up really quick. Um, If you Google it, it's on there though, but they're great. So I recommend them if you want to be able to practice, especially in the cold weather, it's getting cold now and I don't like to be outside in it. So good times. Greg, what do you got? I have um, Overwatch Defense. You can save 10% off at Overwatch Defense with the code CANON10. Um, shoot them an email or give them a call to get them all, get an awesome Cerakote job. Also, the code MINDSET10 in all caps saves you 10% off all phone scope products on the phone scope store. Bang, there we go. Uh, on my end here, Terran Tactical Innovations, TerranTacticalInnovations.com, TSM10, 10% off all their parts, not their gunsmithing services, but all their parts, base pads, Benelli parts, AR parts. Uh, what else I got? UM Tactical, umtactical.com, TSM 10 for 10% off. They got a lot of holsters and AR gear over there. Jesse, any board tech stuff on the fly discount codes that we got? Actually, what we're going to do is after we go over all this, hopefully we get a lot of excited customers that are going to start making up some wish lists for Black Friday. I would strongly encourage them to check out our site on Black Friday and that weekend or go to our website down the bottom right corner, sign up for our newsletter. You're going to get the e-blast about all of our Black Friday specials, which are absolutely the best of the year. So you won't want to miss out. It's good timing. There we go. All right. So where are we at on our cleaning process? We talked about the board guides, the rods. We got the Jags and Apaches going down now. Where are we at? Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll pass a couple of patches down. We'll quickly go through the procedure. I won't bore you to death, you know, running – you know, hundreds of patches here and brush strokes and things like that. You, know, you can see some of this gear in action uh, and then we'll start working our way back. How's that sound? Perfect. All right. So <clears throat> went over all the gear. Here we go. We're going to take, and I kind of have this on an angle. So let me actually, before I do this, I'm going to go and see if I can zoom in here without messing everything up. How's that sound? We're going to go out there how's that look we got the uh, end of your barrel that's hog there let's go back right there what about there yeah we're going to, all right good so what we'll do here i can only see one screen at a time so it makes it a little difficult perfect so what we're going to do here i have our patch guide angled so you guys can see it a little bit better normally this is facing straight up like I had said before, the nice thing about the patch guide is when you have a long cleaning rod, this rod's, you know, a 44 inch long cleaning rod, you're standing almost four feet behind your rifle. What you can see here basically is your jag or your brush is held in this black cylinder here. So all you have to do is take your patch, you lay it on the plate there, take your cleaner with your free hand, you can drip it all on there, soak the patch down real well. And if you want, which you should, besides spiking your patches, you just move this patch a little bit off center, either up, down, left, or right. And as you spike you know, or move your rod forward, it automatically side spikes that patch just like that, and boom, down the barrel it's going to end up going. So you can go all the way down the barrel, and you're going to come all the way back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run just a couple of patches so you can see that real quick. Take another patch there. We're going to wet it down real well. Push forward, down the barrel it goes. Again, when you're standing four feet behind a gun, it makes life a heck of a lot easier. You'll see that the patch guide has ribs that run around the edge here, so you don't have solvent leaking all over you know, your stock. I don't have any solvent or anything on my hands. Uh, again, I'm just gonna clean it up here. Go ahead. That, 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 is, that is pretty cool, man. I, I, I'm, uh, you know, I, I don't know if I've been excited about uh, cleaning materials and, and stuff like that before, but that, that is a cool rig right there, man. And then if yeah. you look at the front of the gun, it's all going straight into the empty Coke bottle. 
Yeah. So, so basically... he should be doing that like in the living room without his wife yelling at him or dripping stuff on the floor or anything. Yeah, so what I'm going to try to do here is, oh, we got to keep going a little bit more. Right about there. Yeah. Uh, so what, you can, what you can see now is all the patches and everything have dropped off all the splatter uh, into this bottle here. And I, for show purposes, I cut a slot in this bottle so I can grab my patches, pull them out, you know, and start to start to look at them. So basically what you have here, I don't know if you can see, you can see just from passing that patch down the board, what, 15, 20, 30 seconds ago, you can already see all the blue discoloration from copper fouling inside the barrel here. And as you go, I'm gonna set these down, you'll start to see, here actually is probably the first patch, you can see more black. So your patches mm -hmm. will come out black first, that's getting all the carbon fouling out. Then you'll start to see them turning more blue and blue and blue, uh, and that's your copper fouling. Uh, so again, you can see everything is just collecting in here, all the splatter, all the junk. Uh, it makes things a heck of a lot easier and cleaner on the other end of the rifle as well. So one thing that a lot of customers say is, well, how's this mount to the barrel? Is it going to scratch it? No, this simply slides on. Because all it is is it has flexible rubber fingers and you can see there's actually a notch here for iron sights if you add them on the end of your barrel so as all you do is you take it, it literally just slides over the barrel and you're good to go that simple so do mm -hmm. and quick come back let's see how about that yeah there we go. So we ran a couple of wet patches down there. Now what we're going to end up doing is uh, we're going to go, we're going to brush. So we're going to take off our jag from our cleaning rod here. Simply unscrew that, set that aside. We're going to go with the brush. Again, this is not a bronze brush. These are nylon bristles with non-brass core and thread. So we're not going to get any of that blue discoloration on our patches from our brush. And if you notice, again, I pushed that patch all the way through. I pulled it all the way back. Cleaning gear is properly designed not to hurt anything. So we're going to come on here. The patch guy again, you're just squirting some cleaner on your brushes. And you, boom. Down the barrel it goes. And I'm going to go all the way down. And I'm going to come all the way back. And you're going to end up doing this, you know, a half a dozen times. And as you can see, I'm not sitting here banging everything else. It's going down the barrel the way that it should. So I'll set that there. <clears throat> and basically what we're gonna end up doing, now we would say, all right, I'm gonna let it sit. Now, how long? Well, it depends on, you know, basically how dirty is your gun. Um, you know, we're gonna let this sit. Five, 10 minutes is normally, you know, if you're, your PRS, 80, 120 rounds through, but, five, 10 minutes is really all that you need. It's not because the cleaner isn't safe, it's just that's all the cleaner really needs. Or if you got stuff to do, let it soak overnight. It's 100% barrel safe. All this here uh, actually has no smell. It's 100% biodegradable as well. It's as harmful to you, me, and your gun as soapy water, but it actually works very, very well. Uh, so basically what we're gonna do here, we're gonna say, all right, we're gonna let it sit. <clears throat> Let's pretend the 10 minutes went by. We would go ahead and we would start to wet patch out the gun. And the reason you want to wet patch it is, is if you start just taking dry patches and running them through, you're pushing all the chemical out. So if there was any fouling left in there, you wouldn't know because your patches would start coming out clean. So you start wet patching it out and watching those patches as they go. Remember, they're going to come out more black at first, and then they're going to start coming out with more and more blue on them. And you can actually see no, it's hard with there, but you can actually see on the blue there, you can see where the lands and the grooves of your barrel are because you have a good cleaning rod with a ball bearing handle that's perfectly following that as it goes. You can start to read your patches and say, wait a minute, this is like right there are your grooves. It looks like that fouling is in the corner of the grooves. It's not up on the lands as much. So as you're going through this process, you're reading these patches and these are what's telling you do you need to continue? Do you not let it soak long enough? Do you need to brush it more or less? And that's how you fine tune your cleaning regimen per the rifle, 
prefer the pistol. Um, and again, every gun is different, but when you know how to read the patches, you can get this down to a science and you'll learn, you know, hey, this rifle here, 200 rounds. This rifle here, 30 rounds. You'll end up, you know, getting that down after you've cleaned it a couple of times. So <clears throat> I don't know if there's any questions or anything um, yet. We, we got a few live ones in here. Sure. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll scroll up. So, John uh, Finch started out saying he loves some Eliminator. Thank you. Um, did we hit Sam Phelps about the uh, for the Curtis three lug actions? Yes. Yeah. Oh, so <laughs> you can see here for a Curtis three lug action. And we're going to get into that as we come back from the barrel into the action. We'll, we'll definitely go over that, too. Let's see. Jen, you want to hit the rest of the live or you want me to? It doesn't matter. Troy Lawton says the Vortec bore cleaning products are outstanding, and so is their, their brass case cleaner. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you, Troy. Uh, Troy's a good, 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 guy. A good guy. He is a good guy. And yep. Steven says that he has a lug cleaning set up by your company, and he loves it. It works very well. Good. Good. Sam yep. Phelps basically is saying that I'm a ninny because I'm fussing about cold weather and it's only 60 degrees. It's Love actually you too, like 45, 40. I know. It is 40. Really Here, here's proof. Look, um, 40 degrees. Andrew again says that their case cleaner is serious business. Lots of people just commenting how great it is. Um, Sam does have a question though. Which patch jag setup or style do you feel is best? Round, square, a jag like you're using now or a Parker Hale style with patch wrapped around them? Do you feel any setup is better than the others? Yeah, we strongly recommend the spear point jags over the Parker Hale. What a Parker Hale style jag is, that's where you wrap the patch around the jag and then push it through your bore. The problem with that is what we have found uh, from us and our customers is sometimes when you wrap patches, if a corner flips up, as you start going into that barrel and transitioning from the chamber to the barrel, boom, it, it just jams because you now have a flap that's come back. With the spear point jags, and if they're designed properly like ours are, the way that the patch kind of folds around that jag and over those rings gives you more of a consistent feel. Plus you can use the side spiking technique that we talked about earlier to make your life a lot easier and really leave the chemical in the barrel where you want. So that's why we prefer the spear style jags over the wrap Parker Hale. Second part of that question was round or square. They both clean the same, you know, it's personal preference. We see that military and law enforcement prefer round, probably because that's what they're just issued and familiar with. More of the competition shooters prefer square. Most of us here prefer square because when we use that side spiking technique, we like to go off to a corner as opposed to just the edge of the patch. So for cleaning a barrel, there really isn't much advantage or disadvantage to either of the shapes. It's personal preference and how you're using it. Again, most of us square because of the side spiking. Uh, you'll see, however, when you get into cleaning other areas like the action, the round patches do work better. So there can be a combination, but for barrels, most of us seem to like square. We do sell more square patches than we do round ones. Uh, but you can't go wrong as long as it's a proper patch. You know, you get some of these that are like pieces of underwear cut up and t-shirts that have the seams through them. Well, I've, those seen, are gonna... I've, I've seen some cut up Hanes t-shirts. Yep. Yep. There's, there's a brand that's famous for that. That's what they do. And you get the seams that run through them, which now creates a thickness variation, which is going to end up jamming in your barrel. So, you know, Stop cutting up your t-shirts. You know, patches aren't fractions of a penny a piece. You know, go out and get some proper cotton flannel patches that absorb uh, and then are really sized correctly per the caliber. And that's probably uh, the second biggest problem we find is people using the wrong patch sizes on their guns. And then they wonder, why is it too loose? Why is it always jamming? Uh, I mean, you go on and you mentioned the Knowledge Center. I mean, we, we've got charts. You know, what? How, how to figure this out. You know, you've got the patch size running down one side, rifle calibers, pistol calibers, shotguns. So you can correctly select the size of your patch because it is also a problem with a lot of customers not using the right size. So we can go under where, where is that? Knowledge Center. 
Oh, you can actually just get if you the go link the is app, in the comments. I'm in the knowledge center. I'm trying to find that uh the the patch this size. One, this one, if you go to the product page of the patch, uh, that's where you'll end up pulling the patch chart up. That is a knowledge bomb right there. I don't Let's know. I just patches. I just been I've been doing this for a long time all wrong. <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah. Uh, um, I've heard I've heard of people using Hanes t-shirts and stuff. But I j I never got into that. I'm like a shit. I mean, if we're trying to save an, uh, a coin, I mean, we're if we're, if we're pinching pennies here. I mean, yeah. patches don't cost. I mean, patches last you for, for if you get a good bag of patches, it almost last you for a good a good time. You know what I mean? Usually. Yeah, especially if you let the chemical do the work and stop just pushing patch after patch after patch through. Let the chemical. <laughs> don't waste the yeah, right. Uh, you get a get thousands and thousands of patches like, well, yeah yeah we and we do we sell tons and tons and tons of them so um but yeah so that is the long answer to jags and patches and kind of what we prefer and what we do uh, yeah. any so, other go i'm here in your knowledge center and to quote anthony i've been doing it wrong the whole time <laughs> yeah right yeah and you Don't know we're not it has a ton of stuff in it. We're, we're constantly adding. Uh, there'll be a ton more there. I mean, we even go over things. You know, there's there's different charts. Of, here's the core items that you need to make a kit. You know, we don't pre-make kits. We custom make kits to your rifle. That's how you do it the right way. Custom so, made kits. Custom made kits. You know, you call us up. You say, hey, I'm shooting a Curtis Axiom Action 6.5 Creedmoor 26 inch barrel MPA chassis. And we give you exactly what you need, so it works perfectly. You know, it's the only way it's gonna it, it's gonna work the way it should. Uh, you know, none of this nonsense where you know you can clean everything from a 17 caliber to a 12 gauge shotgun for 20 bucks. <laughs> yeah, that that Walmart special. Walmart special, baby. So yeah, um, <clears throat> that's what we do for our customers, and we we encourage our customers to email us, call us, let us know. Any questions that you have, we'll we'll custom build that kit. Make sure you get the right gear and you not know, a bunch of junk that you don't need. So, uh, on that there, but yeah. So we pretended, hey, we run our patches. We've let it sit. Uh, we're gonna go through. I pushed a, a dry patch through. I'm just gonna push another one through for now. And again, you can just see how easy that is. Boom, down the barrel it goes. So <clears throat> we're gonna dry patch out that barrel. It's 100% clean now. A lot of guys will say, well, do I need to put an oil in there? Or what do I need to do next? And the answer is yes and no. If you're going to go and shoot the gun, dry patch it out, go and shoot the gun. You don't need to oil it before you shoot it. If you're going to store the gun, hey, end of the season, this is going in the safe. Yeah, you do want to run a, a good oil that can protect against the rust and corrosion from the months and months and months sitting there. So... As we were kind of talking about before, less is more when it comes to an oil. You don't want to go and sop, you know, run all these sopping wet patches down the barrel, go stick it in the in the safe, and then you come back months later and all that oil is all it's done is run all the way down, back your action into your bolt, bolt carrier groups, whatever it might be, and it just makes a mess. So less is more, you know, really what I'll do to properly uh, protect the bore before storage is. I'll take a patch, I'll dampen it, run it through the barrel. Sometimes I even just grab that patch, maybe put one more drop of oil on there, run it through again. You're just trying to put a light film on those barrel walls to protect it against the rust and corrosion during storage. And if you're shooting it, well, dry patch out the cleaner, start shooting. And you, you had made a comment earlier where, you know, you'll clean your gun and then you'll go out and you'll take 10, 15 fouling shots um, to try to get it to maybe be a little bit more consistent what we've noticed is it really depends on two things the cleaner that you're using or the products that you're using a lot of our stuff we've taken a, a ton of time in r d to formulate them so when you dry patch it out of there it's not leaving these oily films and everything else behind that are going to create these fouling shots you'll see with a good barrel um that the throat's in good shape maybe a shot or two i mean your cold clean bore shot it's dead on at least with our products um when you do have guns where you get people saying hey you know it does it takes me a box of shells to get this thing to settle down nine out of ten times 
you've got some type of issue in the throat of the rifle, whether it's erosion, fire cracking, something uh, causing that. And again, you had kind of mentioned this before when we we're talking about the carbon rings, when you shoot and you have imperfections, after those first 10, 20 rounds, whatever it is, you're filling in all those imperfections with the fouling. Well, when you do that, you can create a more consistent sealing surface, which is more consistent pressures, which is better accuracy, et cetera, et cetera. But what will happen is it'll go take you 10, 20 rounds to get, you know, a good group. It'll shoot for maybe another, I don't know, 50, 60 rounds. And then all of a sudden it falls off a cliff. The accuracy really starts opening up. And that's where, you know, again, we normally see it's because an issue in the throat. So that's one thing to keep in mind out of it. Hey, I have to do all these fouling shots before. Proper products, decent barrel, you shouldn't have that problem. Um, awesome. Also for storage, let's say let's say that was our grandfather's hunting rifle and it's been sitting in a state for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Are we also recommending light coat on the outside of the barrel or and that makes sense too to prevent rust and all that? It's a, good, it's a good question. A lot of the older firearms are blue. They're not Cerakoted or stainless or things like that. So yeah, they are susceptible to rust and corrosion. You can go ahead and you can, as we generally say, lube up the outside of your gun. I don't know about you. I can't stand oily guns. They just make a mess. They collect lint and dust and everything else. So we actually have a product called our Shield Rust Preventative. It does exactly what the name says. It protects against rust and corrosion. But what you do is you kind of just spray it on, wipe it down real quick, let it sit for five minutes, and it'll almost look like it evaporates. But what it's doing is it's actually going into the pores of the metal and sealing off the pores to protect against rust and corrosion. Hit it one more time. You'll see. You can take your hand. You can wipe it on the gun, wipe it on your foot, and we'll have a big oily mess all over the place. And it's fantastic. I use that on on some of our machining equipment here, hand tools, things like that, where you just don't want these guns to be all oily and everything else. But if you're one of those guys that wants a little bit of oil on the outside, absolutely. We have our, our friction guard gun oil. It's the same one that we would run down the barrel. You could put that on the outside of the gun if you wanted, but we would definitely recommend our shield rust preventative over this for the outside if you could. Oh, awesome. there, we, there we go. We kind of talked about the kit. So you guys do not sell, you guys sell this piece by piece or we do have to call and for you guys to kind of assemble a kit. No, no, we sell piece by piece. I mean, if you know what you need, feel free, go for it. We're just offering you the service where if you have any questions, whether it's on, on any of the products, uh, let us know. And we'll basically shoot you back an email saying, Hey, here's the handful of items that you need core items if you will to properly maintain your rifle or your pistol or your shotgun um for those customers who aren't 100 percent sure um are we are we so what do we do with our whole bolt that we're taking out we, we uh, what are we are we just throwing it in some oil or putting it back or what, what i know that's not the case but hell that's a good that's a good segment you know we'll say all right we're done with the barrel yeah we're going to keep moving back so i'm going to pull this cleaning rod out here I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to pull the guide out. So now what we're doing is we're going to come back into the action area here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to zoom in again here so you guys can see a little bit better. How's that? Yeah, there we go. So we work our way back. The first thing we have is the chamber. So you had your bore guide, which is basically sealing from right around the neck of the cartridge and back. So you could and still do have some bowing in there. Uh, when you pull a case out and you look at it, you have the carbon that kind of blows back on the, on the neck and the shoulder there. Well, the opposite side of that is your chamber. So you'll go in and you know, you can, you're going to clean that area out. You're going to work your way back to the locking lug recess. Uh, that is, actually becomes very, very dirty, and we're going to go into why in a second, and then we'll come back through the action. Now, there's a couple of ways you can go and clean uh, the actual chamber. You know, there's what we call a chamber mop, which is just this fluffy cotton thing here. You stick this on the end of uh, an action cleaning tool rod, put it in there, spin it around, and it'll go into the neck and the shoulder there and kind of clean out all of that, you know, fouling that's in there. Some guys will also take a brush, appropriate size brush, and wrap a patch around it. You can do it that way too. 
Um, but between those two methods, that's really the easiest and most effective way of doing it. Now I mentioned, you screw this on the end of, of, of a rod. And, and basically what you have to have here is you have to have a fixed handle rod. Here you don't want a rotating ball bearing handle because as you go in and try to spin this around, well, all the ball bearings are gonna do is spin and you're not gonna spin what's ever on the end of this rod. So here's one of those tools that will make life a heck of a lot easier. Um, and you're gonna see why here in a second. So what I'm gonna do here, is a quick I'm gonna put my mop on the end of that cleaning tool rod and you'll see as you go up and in for the action here just gonna go right up in there and give it a couple of spins boom you pull it out and as you can see of course this one is clean because we didn't put that much in there this gun wasn't that dirty to begin with um, and whatnot some guys will, and what we recommend, you have two of these. You use one that you can dampen with your bore cleaner to just help clean everything out, uh, the carbon, the shavings, things like that. And then you follow it up with a completely dry one just to make sure everything is clean and dry. So again, it's not complicated, but it's an area that a lot of people forget to do that because if you leave cleaners in there, you go, you close that bolt, you can have uh, pressure issues. You can start denting your cases because there's liquid in there. There's a lot of problems that can happen for having a bunch of liquids or oils in your chamber. So make sure to clean that out. That is super, super important. So what you basically do, and this will answer some of those questions as well, we're gonna come back into the locking lug recess. You can see here, we have a tool. So we do this completely different than anybody else out there. What we've done, and I don't know if you guys can see, we've molded basically out of a soft rubber here the profile of and this one here is a two lug bolt. So what this does is this will perfectly mimic your bolt head as it goes down the action. In the center here, you can see that there's almost like a spear point kind of jag, if you will. And it's all you're doing is you're taking a patch and you're spiking it over the end here. As it goes down the action, the patch folds back up over this and perfectly follows that. It goes right into the locking lug recess. You spin it around and it cleans it out lickety split. I know, Greg, you can comment on that, how well it works. So what you do, again, you're going to see, I'm going to come in here. I spiked my patch on the end of the rod, line it up. It's going to go through and you'll see what I also have here. I have a little collar. We put these on our action cleaning tools to make sure you're not banging everything around. It centers it. So you go, you push it forward. We're following that, that rifling there. It's going to go right into the locking lug recess, spin it around a couple of times, pull it back out. The patch ends up actually staying on there because we have a little barb. So you don't have to fish it out from inside your uh, locking lug recess. You pull it out and voila. I mean, you can see just from, just from that one quick pass there, you know, that's, that's what was coming out. And again, this is a relatively clean gun to begin with. You'll have guys that go in and you'll wet this with a little bit of cleaner. This will come out black as black can be. Part of the reason that it does that is because you should be putting a dab of grease behind each bolt lug. So basically, and I, uh, the bolt here, let me grab that. Basically what you're doing is Behind each bolt lug, you just put a dab of grease on each side. Again, less is more. You don't want to put a lot. Because if you think about it, when this is going in there, you're closing your bolt handle, that's camming up against the front of your action. You do not want to ball that up. That's a real, real bad mistake to make on a nice expensive action. So between that grease, all the carbon that blows back, everything else, it all collects in there. I know, Greg, you've had a chance to use this as you showed you have the three lug version um of how well this cleans that out there because the other versions they just have these little like cigarette butts or these dental roll things and they half get in there and then they fall out it, it's really we got sick and tired of doing it that way and we just decided to come out with our own way. yeah I'll, I'll show you guys what i used before i used uh this roll of paper towels and then like a pen or a screwdriver or something inside of it um and 
you know, combined with a, a toothbrush and Q-tips and spent a whole bunch of time, but I now have this and I got it set up for both two lug and three lug. Yeah, so basically what we have is for the three lug version, we sell, um, it's a round cylindrical version and you trace your bolt head because there's so many different profiles of the three lugs. Uh, you trace your bolt head on a piece of paper, cut it out, hook it over like you would a patch, and then you just come in and you kind of clip out the, the three lug profile. You don't have to have it exact. It's a soft, flexible rubber. It's going to mold and form perfectly uh, you know, to your, your action there. So between those two, and here so you can see there's the round version that you had, Greg, that you went and cut down to mimic your three lug bolt. Yep, and literally all you do is you take the bolt, put it down on a piece of paper, um, poke it onto here, and then just kind of cut it out with some real massive artistic skill here. Yeah, yeah, it, really, uh, it, it works really, really well. We've, uh, we've sold a ton of these since we've come out with them. And I know we're focusing on bolt guns, but we actually do the same thing for ARs. So the problem with ARs, you have like the barrel extension. You, know, you go in there with a chamber brush to clean it out, but then you got to dry it. And you're going in with paper towels, fingers, pens, whatever it is. We just took the same principle. We just made this. I don't know if you can see it. It's a cross. Mm -hmm. Basically, these pedals will just flex back, go through the barrel extension, pop open, and the patch then goes around in there, cleans it out perfectly. So we've, we've done that with, uh, you know, ARs as well, not just bolt gun. So, well... So basically, yeah. again, you go on in, you clean the chamber, you clean your locking lug recess, as with our tool, as it goes down through there, you're cleaning the raceways all the way in the action. And really all that's left is if you have, depending if it's a mag gun or, or not, you know, you get some of the stuff down in there. We make these um, polymer reinforced cleaning picks. They won't scratch and mar everything up, but the tips are actually strong enough that they're not just gonna break off right away. Um, we've got one that's flat on one end, and then we've got, you know, one that's angled on the other. You can use, as you had mentioned, uh, you know, some degreaser or whatever. You go in there with a patch, uh, you know, from, from the side, injection port, the back, you name it. I've used this tool on pistol slides, brakes. I used it to clean the vents in my truck the other day. Uh, <laughs> I just use this thing for everything. So these are also yeah. handy little tools uh, that we make as well. Nice. I got two quick live on the uh, on the chamber cleaning. Jorge said he needs one of those, and Sam Phelps said, "Guess what I'm ordering." You guys won't be. You guys won't regret it. I I spent the money, and I love it. Yeah, I mean they are hands hands down much nicer than anything that's out there. Uh, like I said, we really just got sick and tired of doing it the other way because uh, it was inefficient and didn't work at all. It was more of a hassle than anything else. So. Really? So that's, that's your action there. You know, as far as, you know, cleaning bolts, you take a double ended gum brush, some of our, you know, the same bore cleaner that you would be using in the barrel here. You can just hit that up real quick because you get a little bit of that brass wash that, you know, some shavings in there and whatnot. Just boom, boom, boom. It cleans it up. Like I said, you put a dab of grease behind each bolt lug. And then really, as far as the bolt body goes, you've got two options. You can lightly, lightly, lightly oil it. I mean, like one drop, spread it with your fingers. Or we do have basically a dry film lubricant. It's the same thing as the oil, except it's dry film. So you can put it on there. Again, drop or two. Uh, it won't collect dust and dirt and debris. Uh, and, and it will still provide the necessary lubrication for the bolt to cycle. Again, you're not running this bolt at, you know, 100 a minute here. Uh, this isn't a semi-auto rifle, so... The lubrication aspect of this isn't as important and there are some good coatings out there that even lessen the need for, for the lubrication as well but again it is something that you want to keep in mind you know making sure you're cleaning you know the bolt faces and everything else some of the bolts you can take apart special tools are needed some aren't you know just to clean and wipe down the inside don't go and fill your bowl up inside with a bunch of grease and oil you're just going to create massive problems down the road uh, again, less is more. You just wipe down, clean these, and you're good to go. Yeah, there, we, there we go. Awesome. Uh, 
Yeah, any any so so our friends over at GSO Technologies, Jen's running one of their suppressors. I know Greg's gonna have one here shortly once we can get all, all the fucking paperwork figured out and how long that process takes. Oh, uh, yep. and I have I have a few. Oh, uh, some of these uh, suppressors are you know you can take them apart. Some of them are contained, so you can't kind of do your self maintenance. And I know a lot of these companies will recommend you would soak that can in some type of solvent or some type of procedure for the ones that don't come apart so what do we do for these suppressors uh suppressors that come apart or don't come apart uh what's the way of getting all that fouling out of it so to start off i would say suppressors are probably the worst or the hardest part of a firearm to clean you know they are 15 volt carrier groups hold nothing to a suppressor everybody you know says okay i agree that i have to clean my barrel at some point but I don't have to clean, ever clean my suppressor. Well, all the fouling that you found in your barrel, where do you think it goes? Into that suppressor. That's a trap. It's designed to trap things. So it's 10 times worse than your barrel. So what we found, and we've been working on suppressor cleaners for the past four years, and it's going to be a new 2020 product for us. Um, we'll have a whole system of how to do it. Um, is specifically, these cleaners are formulated for these suppressors. Everybody says, ah, you know, the carbon buildup in this. It's just unbelievable. It's the same thing you're seeing on your brakes. The problem with that is it's not carbon. It's about 60% copper. There's a ton of copper in that hard baked on stuff inside your suppressor and on your muzzle brakes. What you can do to prove it to yourself is take some of our like eliminator bore cleaner that removes copper or our copper remover, rub it on your brake with a Q-tip or whatever, and watch how blue, how fast and how blue that turns. That's your copper fouling right there. So you now have a uh, metal, you've got carbon all baked in there at six, seven, eight hundred plus degrees. Uh, it's very, very difficult to remove. And there is no product hands down out there that can remove this effectively. Even our bore cleaners, some of them will work all right, but to us, all right is not good enough. So we specifically formulated some cleaners. Uh, what we're recommending is on a center fire suppressor at about 2,000 rounds, give or take. Uh, is, is a good point to clean them. You start going five, 10,000 rounds. Again, it just exponentially increases on how much fouling is in there and how long it takes. You have 2,000 rounds through that center fire can is all we're gonna say is you plug the end of it, fill it up, shake it to get all the air out of it, let it sit 24 hours. After the 24 hours, pull the plug, you got to flush them and rinse them out. Again, just running it under your sink isn't going to work, even your hose, because there's baffles in there. There's chambers. All they're going to do is fill up with water, and you're going to get no flow through it. So we actually have a special device coming out that will flush the suppressor out real quick for you um, to make sure you're getting all of that fouling out. And we'll also have a little uh, cup, basically, that you can drop your suppressor in that will hold it up right as you're filling it up and contain anything that spills. So, again, it's a system. Uh, you'll go in 24 hours. It's a two-part solution. Part A addresses the carbon side of it, uh, and part B, you plug it again, soak it for 24 hours, rinse it out, and you're done. We've taken suppressors uh, with about anywhere from 2,000 to 20,000 rounds, and we've been cleaning them. We'll remove 200 grams of fouling. I mean, that's wow. less wow. It almost looks like if you took you know, a can of powder and just started dumping it out on your scale and had a nice mound there. It's unbelievable how much you get out of this. So I kind of joke to people and say, you're telling me that, you know, a quarter of a pound hanging off of the end of your barrel, you don't think that's going to change your point of impact at all? Come on now. And we're, we're seeing that, especially, you know, with PRS, you get half the people that use cans, half the people that don't, you know, there's a mix there. You get some of these cans and these brakes with about 4,000 rounds through them, and the accuracy, again, falls right off a cliff. Pull that suppressor off, pull the brake off, boom, the gun's on. So they do start to affect the accuracy. Some manufacturers don't like to admit that. I truly inside feel that they just don't know what to do. You know, they're suppressor manufacturers. They're not chemists. That's what we do. So there is going to be a way out there that you can effectively clean these. So we'll have a setup for Two parts set up for center fire suppressors. Then you have rim fire suppressors. The bowing goes completely different. It's lead. Oh. The yeah. waxes. 
you get yeah. a thousand rounds through one of those and they're packed full of stuff. Yeah. See, I was, that, I was getting that, all excited. That's why those are, that's why those are most of the 22 ones are real. You can take them all apart. The problem is you shoot a thousand rounds through it, you can't even get it apart. You know? <laughs> uh, there. So you'll go in, you cork it, fill it up, you know, let it go 24 hours, flush it out, and then it baffles. They all just pull right out. Uh, and then you can go ahead and, uh, you know, if you had to take it apart, soak it longer, wipe it off, that's really all that you end up needing. Uh, so yeah, we've addressed that problem here uh, for a new 2020 product. Man, see, I was getting all excited. I was going to convince Jen since she has a suppressor now that she needed to buy the suppressor cleaner system, and then when <laughs> mine shows up, I'd be like, "Hey, buddy!" But I, I guess since I'm get, I got a rim fire can on the way, and she's got the center fire can. But, there you uh, go. We can both of you covered. Awesome. So he got some pistol cans in the shop that I know have never seen. Any like any type of cleaning at all. They've just been on rental guns. So yeah. I can imagine what they That's got crazy. in them. Like yeah. we have we have a we have a surprise every time I pull it off the wall, if it just tips a little bit, you'll notice stuff running out of the suppressor. Like That's just true. carbon and like powder or like you know, it's just I'm like shit, and we just got got that suppressor. Like it's not that old, and that's a shotgun suppressor, so I don't know what that goes into. So yeah, there we have a a 870 with a suppressor with suppressor on there, and you just tip that thing over, and stuff is just running out of it all day long. Yeah, absolutely. You know uh, what we found, whether it's a pistol, a rifle, um, it seems again the rim fires are worse because you don't have as much pressure to help blow some of the stuff out. You know, shotguns, you've got a load of powder there, uh, you know, so, yeah, <laughs> we can really, uh, really get fouled. So, it, yeah. it, it make, we, were, we were astonished at, at, you know, we would bore scope these, you know, look at the insides, and it just looks like a molten lava field. All the ports, all the chambers, they're all just packed full of stuff. And, you know, again, they designed these so the gases can flow through these chambers in different directions and at different rates. Well, when you plug that whole thing up, how can it possibly work? You know, you can hear there's decibel changes as well. You know, you can hear some of the difference and then you all start to see it with, uh, with the accuracy effects. So, yeah, the, it is something that shouldn't be forgotten. Again, you don't have to clean it after every, you know, 100 rounds like you do your rifle barrel, but eventually they, they, they should be cleaned. And let's face it, you know, Greg, you just said, you know, <laughs> you spend $200 on a stamp and you wait six, eight, ten 10 months, uh, you spend what thousand bucks on a suppressor give or take 500 each way and mm-hmm. you want to prolong the life of of that investment how, how many months jen 11 11 that's where i've had two come back in 11 i've heard of people getting them in three but i don't know what that i don't i'm never that person yeah i, I was got 11 it. months I got two good live real quick. Uh, Mike said suppressor cleaning. Yes. And he wants to know, will the suppressor cleaner be an ultrasonic safe solution? Uh, You don't need an ultrasonic cleaner. We purposely designed it that it will work just by soaking. What we found with the ultrasonic cleaners is there's a ton of different coatings out there. There's a ton of different materials. You're going to get guys that just drop these in here and walk away and wonder why the coating got eaten off of uh, the outside. Oh, yeah. There's no need for that. Um, ultrasonic cleaners, when they're used correctly with the correct solutions are okay. But again, for this application, it actually really slows it down because the ultrasonic cleaners are using cavitation to move the cleaners around and kind of you know, go after that surface. We want the chemical to get on it, soak, penetrate through it, loosen it up and bring it off. So as the, the, the cavitation is occurring, it actually slows it down and again, it's all you're doing is shaking the chemical inside. It really doesn't do um, any good. So there's no need for it. That's good to know. And then uh, Jorge says he has a Sparrow 22 and it's a pain to clean, almost to the point that he doesn't want to shoot with it. Yep. Yeah. But Fill it up, let it sit 24 hours, it'll come right apart for you. That's, that's my kind of cleaning, set and forget, because I forget everything. Yeah, and it is safe. I mean, if you let it go for more than 24 hours, it, it doesn't matter. Um, we're just saying usually 12, but 24 hours, uh, we know the cleaners don't want to need it to be. Yeah. Very sweet. Some good ones there. Uh, 
lastly, I know you got to hear this. So I have the, the cleaners and your, your, your solvents and stuff. You have that kind of twist top, right? You twist it a little bit, it'll let a little bit out. You twist it a lot, a little lot out. And you always get the people who said, when are you going to come out with something like that? A little fine, a little fine needle so I can get in the nooks and crannies. I, I know that I have a bottle of this that I kind of reuse all the time and refill it with some of my favorite uh, cleaners. Mm-hmm. But do you, I know you got to hear that because I know I've had, I'm looking at them right now and they, they have those same tops and sometimes you get too much to come out of that at once. Well, it all depends on the top. You know, the tops that we have, the, the orifice size in them is actually pretty small. You can literally dispense just one drop out of our caps that come on mm-hmm. our, our, regular, you know, our regular bottles. So uh, believe it or not, these work pretty well you know sometimes for oils again where a less is more those you know needle oilers can come in uh and really the best thing to do is you just buy them and uh, yeah you can buy a bunch of them off the of amazon i've seen them in like dollar stores and something like that you can twist the top off put your favorite company's cleaner in it and just use it there you go yeah yeah Set i think you'd be surprised to, you know with, with the caps that we have how little of a drop you can apply if you want it mm-hmm so I got a quick one um, for me before we wrap up. Um, of course, half this show, I'm sitting here shopping, saying, I need this, I need this, I need this. Mm-hmm. Um, looking at your cleaning rods, you have the poop, the proof positive bore stick and the yep. V stick. Yep. What's the difference? So basically, the proof positive bore sticks are our, our top of the line cleaning rod. They're the ones with the great ball bearings. I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the chart as we do it. You can see they're on the top. Oh, the Knowledge Center. Great. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) They're the top of the line cleaning rods. They have those awesome ball bearing handles. The tip on the end of it is made of our proof positive non-brass material. So you don't turn your patches blue from the the tip on the end of your rod. You can see we have a ton of different colors here. Well, each one of those colors indicates a different caliber cleaning rod. So we for example, are one of the only companies that makes a cleaning rod for six millimeter through 270. All the other companies, they force you to use like a 22 or 223 cleaning rod to clean your six or your 6.5. Too small of a diameter, too flimsy of a rod. Um, And they also don't come in the length variations. We go anywhere from a 25 inch long rod to a 60 inch long cleaning rod in in that proof positive four stick line. I tell people, listen, if you're shooting a lot, these are about 20 bucks more. They're worth every single penny and they'll last you the rest of your life if you're using it the way that you should. So again, that's the top of the line. For those guys, you know, who might be pulling out their hunting rifle once, twice, three times a year, we've got a little bit more of a cost effective uh, option here. You know, as you can see, it's not as many diameters, there aren't as many lengths. Again, it's going to save you a couple bucks so you can spend that on the other cleaning gear, like a bore guide uh, that you really should have. So, again, they have ball bearing handles on them. They are a quality rod, just at a little bit of a better price point for somebody that might not be using it as much. Awesome. And yeah. that, uh, that, that visual aid you have there, we could find that in the Knowledge Center? Absolutely. Or when you go to the product pages uh, on the rods, you can find those as well nice yeah digging it any any more live before we wrap up here I'm, I'm i'm digging it that is all we have right now there we go yeah i know i know the prs community seems to know your product like i said i i really have never heard of you until greg scheduled the show so um we need to get this i really dig this this stuff i i, I think man i learned a lot here uh, we definitely need to spread this among some of the, you know, those action pistol games and those those AR tactical dudes. I don't know. It's weird. I, I find it weird that I've never heard of you. I was like Jesse from Vortech. What the hell is this? And look at look at the, look at the show that happened to come out of this. So I dig it. Yeah, uh, we're, we're mostly known in more of the precision rifle, you know, realm. Uh, guys who are really after accuracy, trying to put the bullet through the same hole, you know, from the old school bench rest crowd. You know, we jokingly say if we can appease those guys, then we can make anybody happy, you know, Mm because they they go to the nth degree to put that bullet through the same hole. So that's really where it all stemmed from. And it slowly has branched out into the pistol community, into the AR community. Um, Again, different weapon systems, you're trying to do different things. So 
Uh, slowly but surely, we're getting there. You know, the, the products do a lot of talking for us. That's kind of what we say. Let the products do the, uh, do the talking. Yeah, well, the demonstration definitely sold me, and uh, I think I definitely need to up my 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 tools and the other craft of cleaning the guns and having the right stuff to 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 be the ultimate convenience, right? We always do things kind of uh, at least I do things a lot of half ass. So yeah. that, now now that makes sense. Like okay, maybe I should just you know because it's a one time buy essentially. You get the board guides, you get this stuff. You really don't have to buy it again. It's it's gonna you take care of your stuff. It'll last you forever. You consume some brushes, you'll consume some patches and some cleaner. But yeah, you're right. Yeah. The rock, the guides. I mean, they'll, they'll last you a lifetime. You know, if, yeah, if you're pass new. those on. Yeah, Indeed. absolutely. Absolutely. We have plenty of customers with 15 plus year old cleaning rods and everything else that are still going strong. So uh, it's like we said, it's a cheap investment or cheap insurance to make sure that high dollar firearm that you just spent a ton of money on is going to function the way that it did when it was you know, coming out of the box. Uh, and that's why a lot of the manufacturers trust you know, their weapon systems you know, to be clean and maintained with our products. Um, you know, so, yeah, slowly but surely, we're, we're definitely getting there. You know, as, as I said, little attention to detail. So, you know, bringing new technology uh, in the engineering and the formulations. I mean, give me one product that's 60 years old that's still the best today. There we go. Everything, you know, improves. There is technology, and that's really what we try to bring to the table and why we feel, uh, you know, we've got the best stuff out there. Lastly here, and then we're going to wrap up, we'll wind us down to shout outs. Are you guys going to be at SHOT Show? If so, where can we find you? If not, is your stuff anywhere else, like in somebody else's? Uh, yeah. This year, we're actually so busy that we are not going to attend SHOT. It's a good oh. problem. Um, you know, you can find our stuff through our dealer distributor network uh, around the world, for that matter. Uh, we sell to all the countries throughout the world. Uh, you can go to the Midways and Brownells, a lot of your mail order houses they sell all of our products you can go onto our website we do have a dealer locator you can type in your zip code see how close some dealers are and at the end of the day we're always here you can come direct to us we love hearing your questions don't be afraid to call us to email us no question is too dumb we might kid you a little bit here and there but uh you know we do we, we, we hope our customers can reach out that's why we're here you know, part of what you get with Bortec isn't just the awesome products, it's the awesome customer service. So we're here to help, we're shooters, we know our products in and out. Chances are if you're having a problem, we've already had it and hopefully we've figured out a way how to uh, solve that problem, make it easier for you. Boom, there we go. We're in wide, went down the shout outs, man. I like it. Greg, what do you have? Start us off. All right, real quick, I got a couple of live ones. Um, Andrew wants to know if all of your rods are one piece or do you sell multi-piece rods? So basically, you always would like to go with a one-piece cleaning rod when possible. Uh, we are coming out with some sectional cleaning rods, so you're going to your PRS match. You're not intending to necessarily clean there, but if something happened, at least you can have a good quality section cleaning rod. Again, none of these cheap steel things that screw together in 10 different pieces, and then you pass it down the bore. They loosen up. They create a sharp edge as you're coming back and forth in the barrel, that's the worst thing you can do. I'd rather mm -hmm. you not clean the needle with those kind of rods. So we have some real high quality, uh, specially designed joints and the handles on the on the rods coming out later, uh, probably the first quarter or so of 2020. Uh, and again, it kind of had the PRS shooter in mind that's on the go. It doesn't want to be taking a four foot long cleaning rod with them, quite frankly, because they're not the most convenient. Or, you know, throw it in a backpack, a drag bag, something like that. But again, you'll have a good quality cleaning rod. Uh, those will be somewhat of a kit. You can have a rod, a bore guide, little bottles of cleaner and oil, some jags and some brushes and some patches all in, you know, a convenient kit. If you were down at the PRS show, you probably saw we had some of them sitting out there trying to get some feedback. I just so happened to have one sitting here. Uh, I don't know how well Ooh. you can see the side there. Oh, that's but, awesome. You know, yeah, it's got you know the jags, the brushes, uh, some of the cleaners, and um, you know this pouch has the rod in there. So again, sometime 2020, first quarter or so, we'll have some select kits out and the different calibers and things like that. That's awesome. Let me know uh, when when those come yeah. out. 
I'd be interested in one of those. Those yeah, are nice. That'd be that'd be awesome to throw in the backpack. I know right now I think there's one company that has something really targeted at us PRS shooters is like throw this in your backpack just in case. And theirs is really like a uh I don't want to say it's low quality because it's a very, very high quality product, but as far as what it is, you know, it's a step above the coat hanger. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's really what we're trying to bring to the table here is a good high quality kit that you're not going to cringe if you had to use it, quite frankly, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to worry about damaging anything. Uh, you know, the rods and everything that are coming in there, if you had to use that for your cleaning kit, you didn't have one piece cleaning rod or anything else, it's going to be just fine. Um, yeah. so we'll have that option available. Yeah. That should be a real good product for us. We've had a lot of inquiries about it. So in, in your kit, I noticed, of course, like I said, I've been shopping this whole time. You got some uh, stuck bullet tools. I'm assuming that's something that threads onto the end of a cleaning rod. Yeah. So we totally do. have one of those in that kit. Yeah. So basically what we have, and I don't, I don't have one here, but we have our bullet knockout kit. It's basically four different machine pieces that have the ogive of a bullet kind of drilled into the front. So you screw that into the end of your cleaning rod kind of hold the cleaning rod up in the barrel, just drop it and use the weight and the gravity of the cleaning rod to knock a stuck bullet out. Instead of ruining the cleaning rod or anything like that, you know, these will center, they're safe, they're made out of brass. And, and oh, the good, the good old squib rod. Mm-hmm. That's no fun. Yep. Let's see what else. Uh, get, who's got a rod and someone's, someone goes to, the, goes to their pickup truck and pulls out a flat, uh, a screwdriver. And oh. oh yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Bang yeah. that thing out of there. I, I got a I got a machine piece of brass for that. Yeah, we learned the hard way because we would have it, you know, everybody. If you reload, you've got to spit brown. It's bound to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and we learned the hard way. We would ruin the tips on our cleaning rods and say, There's gotta be a better way to do this. And with that said, all the tips on our cleaning rods are designed to be replaceable. When you slam it in your car door or you do something stupid like that. We've got you covered. You know, they're just held on there with threads and Loctite. It's a simple fix at home. You didn't scrap your entire cleaning rod like you do with a lot of the other manufacturers. That's awesome. Um, Mike Bell said both uh, best show or most useful show on TSM for a while. Good job, y'all. And thanks, Jesse, for sharing your knowledge and products. You have gained a few new customers tonight. Well, good. I'm glad uh, I could, could, could help you guys out. You know, it was a pleasure being here. You know, really, like I said at the beginning, we're here to educate our customer on what to look for. And we know that the educated customer is going to end up coming back to us. So um, anytime we mean it, we say it, call us, email us, website, you know, let us know what questions you have. We're here to help uh, make your life a little bit easier. As we say, you know, they call it shooting, not cleaning. So we'll leave the shooting to you. You leave the cleaning to us. Nice. And last comment before um, we wrap up the shout outs is, uh, Jorge said, thanks guys and gals. Uh, great job, Jesse. Got to see your demo here since I couldn't at the Precision Rifle Expo. I think uh, Vortex had him pretty locked down up there on the on the range the whole time at Expo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I dig it. I, I really, I, I'm liking it. Hey, if you want to see another great show, check out that Brandon Wright show we did. Totally opposite from this one. This is more shooting tips, stuff like that. I thought there was a lot of good pro tips in that one, just saying. Mm -hmm. All right, so for my shout outs, uh, I have Shooters and Sharpshooters of Augusta, our uh, local, two local ranges here in Augusta. Overwatch Defense for an awesome Cerakote job. PDC Custom, you could get yourself a sweet rifle chassis just like that, are available in the beautiful neon green. Um, NDZ Performance, if you want to build a really sweet Gucci Glock. Phone Scope, probably the uh, coolest precision rifle training aid out there. Um, Shooters World Propellant, uh, literally right before this show, I was loading up some ammo right over here and uh hunters hd gold for some really cool glasses well jan what do you got mcmillan fiberglass stocks love my stock check them out that's the a10 when i'm at the finale if anybody wants to get behind an a10 let me know i'll be there on the um, train up day night force optics gsl suppressors worn scope mounts uh under industries shooters of augusta and sharpshooters of augusta we bad phone scope and the indoor dry fire training system website i put it in the comments but it's idts-dryfire.com so check them out for 20 percent off if you want a cool dry fire target 
Yeah, there we go. Uh, any shout outs on your end, Jesse? No, I just want to remind customers, awesome Black Friday specials coming up. All this gear that you see is going to be on sale. It's the perfect time. Make that wish list. Get it to your loved ones so you actually get something useful that you want. Uh, you can go to our website, Vortech.com. You can sign up for our um, newsletter and our email list down the bottom right-hand corner. You'll get all the information about the sale. It's really the best time of the year uh, to get some great gear. There we go. Yeah, we got that coming up around the corner. Uh, shout out to my end. If you're watching on the YouTube side of thing after the live broadcast went down below the video, yellow subscribe button, hit that every Tuesday at nine. We're doing a new episode of the shooter's mindset featuring another great guest folks over at tandem cross. All right. Been rocking their hats for the last man, a bunch of shows here uh, for all your rim fire needs. They got some center fire stuff over there, but they really focus on the rim fire stuff. Uh, check them out. If you need any parts or repair stuff or anything like that. If you want to email me, the shooters mindset at gmail.com is a good way to do that. Definitely thanks to Jesse from Bortech for coming on, spending two and something. Oh, wait a minute, this one went a little bit long here, two and a half hours of his time here to go over this stuff. We appreciate it. It was a big, some big knowledge stuff. I, I really dug the show. Absolutely. I thank you guys. I had a blast doing it. You know, look forward to uh, coming back. And like I said, you know, thank you again. We're here to help. Let us know if you have any questions. Here we go. I think that'll do it for episode 277 of the Shooter's Mindset. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye now.